Hello, everybody. Chaplain Bob here. Um, this isn't really going to be a Bible study more than just some thoughts. Um, you know, I was always wondering why the television networks and the movies always put out all these alien invasion type things. I mean, you know, they did um, the War of the Worlds. They did... Um, the day the earth stood still and you know the one in the 50s and then they did another one they did a remake um you know and, and i mean there's thousands of you know well maybe not thousands but there's dozens dozens of movies about aliens coming to earth some good some bad um but i always wondered why are they doing this and some people put forth the idea that perhaps uh, they were doing this so that the earth would come together. You know, the, the communists and the capitalists and the Protestants and the Catholics, and we would all get together and fight the alien, uh, the alien invaders together, you know, and join together. Kumbaya, right? And I thought about it and I said, you know, that really doesn't make that much sense to me. You know, they do want to create... The beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the antichrist, plural. Uh, they want to get a one world government, one world currency, probably the mark of the beast. I don't know exactly how they're going to do it, but, you know, the Bible says they will do it eventually. But instead of the world getting together to fight an alien invasion, I'm thinking maybe... When Christ returns in glory in the clouds and every eye sees him, maybe they're going to say that that's the alien invasion that we need to fight. You know, that's, that's what I was thinking. Maybe that's what they're going to try to get together and, and fight. You know, you think about it. I mean, every eye is going to see him. He's going to be coming with the clouds. Christ left with the clouds and he's going to be coming back with the clouds. And um, so maybe that's, yeah, maybe that's the alien invasion they're going to try to prevent, you know, the, the army from heaven. What do you think? Well, you know, in Matthew 24, verse 30, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Huh. So, yeah, they're going to see him coming in the clouds with glory, right? Um, and then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Verse 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, you know, the dead in Christ, right? That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that's the gospel, people, if we believe that Jesus died for our sins and rose again from the dead, okay? Oh, wait, that's the Bob translation. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which are uh, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, uh, if you're alive, you're not going to stop. You're not going to be able to stop those that are dead in Christ from coming. Uh, because the dead in Christ are going to rise first. So that's, yeah. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a secret rapture. Oh, wait. No, it doesn't say that. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Yeah, you know, a, a secret rapture always comes with a shout. Uh, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of 
of the Archangel and with the Donald Trump, oh, wait, no, never mind, and with the Trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. See, if, if, if a Messiah comes and, and, and you don't meet him up in the air, it's the wrong Messiah, people. It's the wrong Christ. Okay, so, you know, when the Lord's coming, we're going to meet him in the air when he's coming down to the earth. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Okay, let's read Revelation chapter 19. This is where the Lord comes back for his bride. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore. Now, you want to be part of the bride or do you want to be part of the great whore? For he hath judged the great whore, which, he did which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, for her smoke rise up, rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Wife, singular, one. There's not a Jewish wife and then a Gentile wife. It doesn't say wives. There's going to be one bride, not two, like the churches try to make you think. Well, you know, the Jews are God's chosen people, and they're going to all be saved. And there's going to be this Jewish bride, and then there's going to be this Gentile bride. No. No. You're either in Christ or you're not. And his wife, not wives, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb, and he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. Boy, I could do a whole Bible study on the horse. We're going to, matter of fact, we're going to do a little study on horses uh, my next Zechariah study because I just recently found out that uh, the horses of Revelation I wasn't sure exactly what they were I had an idea but Zechariah I think it's chapter 6 explains what they are I thought wow that's pretty incredible and he that sat upon him was faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies and the armies which were in heaven, followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, clean and white. 
Now, these are the Lord's armies. These are the armies of the Lord. Verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Uh, Revelation 19 and verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thighs a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast. Now listen carefully. And I saw the beast. Now in Revelation it calls him the beast. Um, others call him the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. Although there are many Antichrists, there's going to be one, the. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies. See, the Lord has armies in heaven, and the beast and the kings of the earth have their armies. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Alien invasion, right? Yeah, because they're aliens from heaven, right? And the beast was taken in with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Say that about five times real fast. Yeah. Alien invasion, people. Yeah, there's going to be an alien invasion, and they're going to want to fight them. But uh, the king of, king, king of kings and lord of lords, uh, they don't have a chance. So, all right. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. Goodbye.